which was great. We were able to, to vet a lot of different people. It was a, a job and a, a set of jobs that were very, very coveted, and we found that out quickly, uh, which is obviously a great thing. And uh, yeah, we we had a we had some parameters in mind certainly that we were that were non-negotiables on on what we wanted. Certainly, starting with the defensive coordinator hire, and you know wanted somebody that we felt like could you know, really adapt to the skill sets that you have. And, and but in college football nowadays, that are ever changing. Um, uh, we wanted somebody that had had certainly success, and, and we wanted to have a little bit of a, a professional flavor uh, in there as well with the entire staff. And we were able to accomplish those things. And obviously, you know, getting Coach Lynn, uh, being able to, to hire some of the assistants that we did was was a big deal. And it, it really all, though, if you, if you had to sum it up, it really all centered around one word for me, that was which was development. Um, and I think development of the defense as a whole, uh, development of our schemes, development of of our players individually at the different positions, and you know, I wanted guys that I felt like had a great history of that. That you could, you had like proof that whatever situation they went into, whether as a head coach, coordinator, position coach, whatever level, they went into those situations and made they made those places, those defenses, those players better. Like you had tangible evidence of that, and uh, and we just said from the beginning, we're not gonna. We're not going to worry about the quality of job that they already have. Like it's, we're not going to, we're not going to be bashful, right? This is USC. There's a lot, a lot of people that want to work here. Pretty much everybody, and so we're going to have a shot at anybody. And uh, and I give a lot of credit to Jen Cohen and our administration. They let us be, uh, you know, very aggressive with that. They they you know we shared a very similar mindset from the very beginning, and I think that's you know in large a, a large part of why the staff came together the way it did. Coach Jordan mentioned it. Haven't seen you in a while. I, I missed you. The big fellow was busy. <laughs> That's and, right, baby. Uh, we get back here in our ch- chairs on Monday for a couple weeks in a row, talk some ball. That'd be great. But kind of fill us in on, on what's been going on. Obviously, the coaching searches were going on and, and uh, high school recruiting. Uh, fill in that gap of re- when the season ends till till spring ball. What, what, what exactly you got going? Yeah, it's it, it's it's funny in, in a weird way. It, it almost gets busier <laughs> when, it, when it ends. I mean, December alone is is – very unique, you know, especially when you add in the the coaching hires that we were making during that period. But yeah, obviously, you know, bowl game was awesome. Um, guys played great. We, we were able, and I think our fans were able to see. We've been really excited. Obviously, the things that are happening on Saturdays, you're fighting your tail off every day. But you also there's a whole another part to college football, and that's what the fans don't see, mm-hmm. and that's what you see on the practice field. What's developing, kind of what's coming. And you get a sense of that as a coach. And so we were really excited going into the bowl game, even though we didn't have a lot of the guys that we played with throughout the season because it was like, all right, everybody's going to kind of get to see what we've been seeing. And, I, you know, we all saw what happened. Um, so that was, you know, that, that was obviously a tremendous night. And then, yeah, from there it was uh, finishing up the coaching staff hires, uh, certainly right in the middle of recruiting. Recruiting was because of – you know, basically half the staff turning over. There was still maybe a little bit more to be done in January than you maybe typically would have um, because we were patient with some of those spots. You wanted to get these defensive coaches hired to make sure that the guys we were taking fit into the vision of where we were headed defensively. Um, so January was was a, a race all over the country to do that. Not only that, but start to, to or continue to evaluate some of the younger players across the country, and then. Uh, team got back uh, in early January, and we've had a, a really good off-season stretch. It's it's been really nice this year. The Week Zero game was cool last year, but it it, <laughs> it cramps everything. Yeah. It's it, like it's not just oh you play a week earlier. Like everything has to happen a week earlier. So we've had really a good full off-season, and uh, we've made some really some tremendous gains in the weight room. The the numbers alone. I mean our defensive line. I mean, to give you an example, our d- defensive line, it's uh, up 340 pounds uh, from where they started um, in January, wow. which I mean, just one position group now. I'm close to that number, actually, <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we put on a Sean Cody. So, uh, yeah, but no, it's and, and it's it's fun to just kind of see that, right? And and each group had their own goals, but we, we physically, um, you know, we, we've hit some of the, the marks that we set for our guys. And. Yeah, and then obviously, you know, we've been gearing up for spring ball here for a while and can't wait to get started. 
given the timeline you, timeline you just laid out, it seems like the new coaching staff has only been together a couple of weeks, given that they were all on the recruiting trail. What's that been like gelling together as a new staff? Yeah, it was a rush to kind of get back and get started. You're right. I mean, January, you're just spread out all over the country. Um, and so really the first time that the defensive staff was actually in a room together uh, was like the first week of February. Mm. Um, and and so obviously they communicated and a few of the guys, you know, that we hired, you know, uh, Coach Belk, obviously retained Coach Nua, uh, Matt Entz, some of those guys who had already been here. You know, Eric wasn't here yet. He was finishing up uh, with the Rams. So, um, yeah, and by the time we got the rest of the sports staff in, it was like mid-February. So it's been, a, it's been um, I'm going to say rush, but we've had to hustle it along to, to get it installed. But these guys, you know, you could see why they were all pretty highly coveted. I mean, they, they, they're really good teachers. They've, uh, Dan, Danton's done a great job leading the room, and it's been fun to, to see our installs come together. You're listening to the head coach, Lincoln Riley, here on Trojans Live. We're going to talk to Miller Moss uh, in a little bit. Coach, he was obviously so fantastic in that Holiday Bowl. Uh, what, what does the quarterback competition look like uh, this spring, going into summer, into camp? Uh, how do you sort of lay that out? Yeah, three guys will rep. Uh, Miller will rep. Uh, Jay Maevo is a transfer that we brought in from UNLV. Uh, will rep, and then Jake Jensen will rep. Um, and yeah, and all three have you know now have game experience. Um, and Miller, as you said, was was fantastic. Not just in the game, but really the entire six week lead up to that bowl game, and not just quarterback play, but from a leadership perspective. I thought he, I thought he just he did an outstanding job. Obviously excited about his progress and the momentum coming off of that. Uh, we were really excited to add Jaden. Um, we thought he was a, a really talented young quarterback. And after the after the bowl game, we 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 backed off from a, an older uh, transfer target, and we set our sights a little bit more on the, the two things we wanted. We wanted the guy to be young, but we wanted him to have played. Um, and those were like our two deals. Like we knew we wanted some a little more competition in the room. We needed another body in the room, but. We wanted somebody that had been on that field before, and so he fit it perfectly, and, and so we, we were thrilled about that addition. And then Jake Jensen did a great job throughout the bowl game and came in on the big yeah, you know, fourth down. down play. And I mean, that was a monster <laughs> play in the game. And so, uh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll rep those three and, and uh, see where we're at after spring. Yeah, coach, you got spring ball coming up, and, and every year I think it's interesting. You you gotta you gotta kind of find new leaders on your team, right? It's it's kind of a reset of your team. Who are guys? You got maybe a chance to look at that for for during the bowl practices and kind of say, okay, what's next? What's next on the horizon as far as leadership? What do you see? Like when when you're looking at spring ball, are you are you looking for trying to find those leaders going up into the season? We are. You know, I, I've I've. I think early in my career or earlier in my career, I guess I would have been maybe a little quicker to just say, well, we think it's going to be this guy, that guy, and that guy. Like, I don't know, more I've gone on, I, I, I prove it. Yeah. You know, prove it. Whether you're a guy that's already been in our program, you know, whether you're a new guy that just got here, like, whoever you are, wherever you came from, like, prove it on this team right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's some, some really good potential leaders in this group. There's some guys that have been good leaders for us here. We brought in a couple of guys from other schools that I think have shown the capability to be outstanding leaders, have been at their places. You know, you think about, you know, Easton, um, you think about Akili Arnold, you think about some of those guys that were leaders in their own programs. And so, um, but it'll be interesting to see how it comes together. We're, we want to position those guys, but then, you know, you want the guys that are going to step up and they're going to do it right now, um, regardless of how they came in. So uh, excited to see it come together, but I do like the potential that we have right there right now. Coach Linton prefaced that uh, spring camp is going to be a very slow install. Mm -hmm. From your eyes as a head coach, what are the indicators of success that things are moving the way it should? Yeah, well, to your first point, yeah, it's it's been it's been really fun to watch our installs happen because they are they're 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 very slow is one word, but it's it's very patient. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very detail oriented. It's not in a hurry. It's not a race to see how many things we can get in. Like we've got time to do that. It's 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 the things that we do put in, making sure the guys understand it very well. And it's taught, um, it's taught very well at the beginning, right? And you, we've all heard the saying, right? You aim for the moon and you're off by an inch and you miss by a hundred million miles, right? <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's that mentality. And it's been, it's been fun to see how methodical we've been with the, um, with the approach. Um, and I think our guys have really taken to it. Uh, and, and the word, I, I think what I'm looking for is two things. I think, I think one would be, that we're constantly making progress, and two, just the confidence in the group, uh, the confidence that the group has to go execute the calls that we do have. Because if you're going to be patient like that, 
that should be rewarded with a confidence from the group because the, there has been a lot of time invested in these different calls. They should really know them inside and out and be able to go execute, and that should happen in spring ball. You know, in a unique circumstance, you got to coach against a game plan against Coach Lynn at the end of last season. You know, d during that process, what, what stood out to you as an opponent? Yeah, um, well, they, they just did a tremendous job. I mean, they uh, you, you saw – the difference in the defense from you know from two years ago to last year, uh, and I thought they were able to adapt to the different offenses they played, where they they changed enough where they didn't look exactly the same each week and were a little bit of a moving target. Um, but a lot of teams that do that, they don't do it well, right? <laughs> it's like they're trying to do so much, they're just not very good at it. I was impressed with even in like year one for for coach that. Even with their adjustments week to week and the changes they made, like their guys did it well um, and were able to defend different styles of offenses at a high level. So, um, yeah, no, I thought obviously thought enough of them that that uh, you know he was one of the first names that popped to mind when we uh, you know when we went on the hunt for uh, for a new defensive coordinator. And uh, you just you know you don't see guys make that type of impact that quick like very often. That's just that's that's pretty rare. Yeah. Coach, offensive line wise, you lose you know, Justin Dietrich and, and Kingston inside. You get to keep uh, Jonah Monheim is a big piece coming back. What do you see that group of in spring? What are you going to be looking for to, as they as they develop? Yeah, we we definitely got to take some steps there. I mean, I think uh, you know that that's a group that that last year uh, we weren't you know we weren't we feel like we just didn't quite hit our potential mm -hmm. there. Um, and and so uh, yeah, you're right. Obviously, Jonah coming back is a big deal. Um, you know, he's going to. Um, step inside and play center for us, um, which will be you know great for our program this year. And it'll be great. breaking news. You should have played the breaking news. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it'll be great for his career long term as well. Uh, so I thought it was a you know really mature decision on his part that'll pay dividends yeah. down the line. Um, yeah, and then you've got you know I, I think we've got a chance to be a pretty big group. You know, Pregnon really came on. He played his best game in the bowl game. He's 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 so much different than he was like last year at this time. I mean, he has made a, he's made huge strides. We're really excited about some of the young guys, you know, in the interior, Lonnie Noah, uh, Amos Talele, Michael, Van, Michael Van Welos. Uh We get Gino back, which will be great after getting injured early in the season last year. Uh, Killian O'Connor. And then, you know, I mean, tackle wise, I mean, you know, shoot, Elijah Page came in and in, in the in the Holiday Bowl. And, I mean, and dominated. Yeah. I mean, dominated. I mean, he he, you know, probably played the best game that a tackle played for us all all, all year last year yeah. against a quality defensive line. So we were really pleased with his progress. Um, Murphy came in and did some really good things in that game as well. You know, we're excited to see uh, Tobias out there. We've got, you know, Lolo, some of the new young guys that are here. So uh, it's an exciting group. It is. I'm, I'm excited to watch them compete, excited to watch them play. Um, uh, they, they've got an edge and a chip on their shoulder, and, 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 and you have to have that um, at that position, certainly at this school. And uh, we've got to take a step there, and this group's very focused on that. Exciting spring ahead for USC football. Can't wait to see Coach's team out there at the Coliseum. April 20 is yep. the spring game. Uh, all season ticket holders will get uh, complimentary tickets, so make sure you get your season tickets and uh, go to usctrojans.com slash tickets for more information. Thank you, Coach. Monster Energy, the, en the official energy drink of USC. And unleash the Beast. And hey, Trojan fans, did you know the Ralph's app gives easy access to weekly sales and personalized coupons? You can earn fuel points, too. Check out the app today and say, well, you cheer us on to another great season. Ralph's proud partner of USC. SC Athletics. As promised, Miller Moss, fresh off six touchdowns in the Holiday Bowl, will join the show next. Blue, 42. Give me the energy to catch the ball, to blow by the defense, to crush whatever comes at me, to win the division, the conference. A ring? Monster Hydro helps Grunk perform at his best every day with the energy and electrolytes your body needs to win on or off the field. Monster Hydro, advanced hydration for everyday performance. Hard charging hydration. It's time to recharge, reconnect, and rediscover your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, there's all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino today. 
With the Ralph's app, shopping online with pickup and delivery is the same as shopping in store. Same low prices, same personalized deals, same rewards on the same high quality items like Honeycrisp apples and pasta sauce with no hidden fees or markups. It's one small click for groceries, one big win for busy families everywhere. Start your cart today at ralphs.com. Ralph's, fresh for everyone. Restriction supply, see site for details. Tommy Trojan is at the 10, the 5, touchdown, USC! Make big plays on the field and in life. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto 24-7 with the tax benefits of a retirement account. That's right, invest in crypto with the tax advantages of an IRA. iTrust Capital is easy to use and has no sign-up fees. Don't be a Monday morning quarterback. Make big plays now. Visit iTrustCapital.com to start investing today. iTrust Capital, the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Taxes and conditions may apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment. Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Some believe spring to be baseball season. It's always Trojan football season. Let's get you back to more Trojans Live with Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Keely Orr. Moss will throw towards the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. Deuce Robinson, touchdown USC. Wide open, got behind the defense by about four yards and a perfectly thrown ball for Miller Moss. Can you count one, two, three, four, five, six touchdown Ooh. passes for Miller Moss? This one a 44-yarder. How do you do? Feels like just yesterday, Sean. <laughs> Did you hear my woo in the background? <laughs> the best in the game is brought to you by Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. The best in that game for sure was our man Miller Moss, who joins us now. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Keeley, your uh, Miller Moss, uh, who heads into a big spring w- with a, a quarterback competition, as, as Coach just laid out. But but just uh, on the whole, as your team, what was that Holiday Bowl experience like in terms of being a springboard into the off season? Yeah, I mean, I think it was great. Whenever you can finish the previous season on a positive note, it kind of springboard you, springboards you into the next off season, whether it be workouts or spring practice, and then obviously going into summer and fall camp. So. Um, obviously always better to finish on a high note than a low one. For sure. <laughs> but um, I think we learned a lot throughout that bowl process as coming together as a team, what that looks like and how that can come to fruition in games and how that can look on the field. So I think it was definitely a positive experience going into the offseason. Miller, Coach kind of took us through what, what the coaches do uh, during this little gap in, in the season right there, right after the last game to spring ball. You know, they got recruiting all this stuff. Take us through the player experience. I can, I can barely recall what I did, but I, I'd like you to, to fill in that gap. Of what are, what are that, the po- <laughs> <laughs> long, long uh, St. Patrick's Day there, Jordan. Yeah. Hey, we're filling the gap for, as a player. What, what are you guys trying to get done from end of the season to the start of spring ball? Yeah, so we'll, we'll get about a week off after the bowl game. I think that's what it was this year. And we'll come back around probably the end of the first week in January, so around January 6th to 8th. Um, and then we have eight weeks of winter workouts plus the last week, which is what we call in-dock, but for everyone, it's our hell week, essentially. So those eight weeks are really focused on just getting bigger, faster, and stronger, and then mentally stronger the last week because you're definitely pushed to your limits if yeah. anyone knows coach wiley <laughs> <laughs> trying to wear you out <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but yeah it, that that entire period of time is really centered around becoming bigger faster stronger getting ready for spring ball getting your body right um if you had any injury coming off last season really getting in the training room rehabbing that and then also investing into our system make sure you have mastery of that going into spring Coach Riley just revealed some interesting information to us who don't know anything, but that uh, Jonah Monheim is shifting over to center. Is that something you guys have repped in PRPs? What is that like having him now as as your your center? Yeah, definitely. Brett um, is obviously doing pro day on Wednesday, so he's came he's come back and, and worked with Jonah a little bit, which has been awesome throughout the yeah. offseason. Um, he was obviously a great player for us, a really cerebral yeah. guy, and I think Jonah can similarly pick up in that role in that um he's a really really intelligent guy um obviously has all the physical tools to be a great lineman but um super excited about him in that role it takes some stuff off of the quarterback as well when you have a really <laughs> smart guy up there so uh happy he's back you're listening to miller moss on trojans live and miller you know the reason i like your story so much and, and to be honest you you are a fan favorite is because you have shown patience in the era of impatience um is is that 
your personality? Is that the family, your family, the way you were raised, how, how you approached this thing from the start? Uh, so, sort of explain uh, you know, why you've approached this thing maybe differently than, than what we see typically out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if my close friends and family would describe me as patient. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, in my mind, like I tried not to get caught up in in what everyone else was doing. And I felt like I just kept making the next right decision for myself and my career and my development. And obviously there were discussions had on what I should do at different points in my career, but every single time, the best thing for me and my development and what I wanted to do and accomplish was to stay here at USC for a multitude of reasons. Um, so that's really how it worked out. I don't think it had to do with anyone else, um, anyone else's decisions, any environment and cultural ball, which I know a lot of people talk about a lot, but just what was the next best decision for my career and my development? Um, and it always ended up with me being here. So I'm happy about that. I think a lot of football fans think, you know, they take competition kind of for granted, I think, in, in the football, in the realm of football players is, you, you know, you're always fighting for your position, no matter in, in the college, NFL, you're right. you, 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 from day to day. And, and, you know, the quarterback pack, uh, position is spotlighted, but you've been in a comp- competition forever. What's it like going into another competition? You're not new to this, right? You just got to keep battling and, and, and you got to spring here where you get a chance to be the starting quarterback for USC. Yeah, I mean, obviously exciting. Um, like you said, I'm not I'm not new to this, so yeah. um, definitely excited. Just really excited for the opportunity. Feel good about about where our team's at, and excited to to lead them throughout the spring. If I remember correctly, you didn't get your senior year of high school. That was the COVID year. What, what was the learning curve for you coming in from you were a junior, basically experience wise in high school to here you are D one at USC. What was that learning curve like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was it was tremendous, especially coming in early um, and not playing that last year. I think. A lot of it also had to do with the situation I came into, um, the state of the program that I that I came into, which probably made it a steeper curve, um, for lack of a better term there. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was it was definitely interesting. I think any high school kid that comes in early to college has a certain learning curve, and I think that was just exacerbated by not having your senior year. So um, it's definitely a steep learning curve. But I'm also like I'm very grateful for the adversity that I faced during that time because like. At the end of the day, that that made me the player and the person I am today. So I think like all that stuff needed to happen. I needed to struggle. And I needed to go through all that stuff. Not that it was easy to live that day to day, which yep. uh, like it was it was difficult at times, and there were struggles, and I had self doubt just like anyone else would um, during a major change in their life. But at the end of the day, looking back on it, I'm extremely grateful for the experience. We've seen the photos of you as a little kid wearing your Matt Barkley jersey and coming to USC games. What's your what's your best memory from being a, a childhood uh, Trojan fan? I mean, I wasn't a child for this, but the the Donald Rose Bowl. I remember I was like, I remember where I was watching that, and I remember him throwing that ball to Deontay Burnett and stuff like that. I remember. How old were you? You were still pretty young. <laughs> I think I was probably like thir- 12, 13. That's, I don't know. That's a child. The, the right answer yeah, was yeah. Sean Cody. Yeah, yeah. Glory days. <laughs> I know it wasn't that long ago, but you know, for us, that's yeah, that's yeah. still very young. <laughs> um, or I wasn't a I wasn't an infant yes. child. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was definitely that was an awesome memory. I remember watching that and just just going crazy. And um, I remember the Saquon Saquon broke that really long yep. run, and I was like, oh god, like we're out of it. <laughs> and then Donald brought him back, and they threw that pick and kicked the field goal. It was just an awesome. That was memory. a classic one. Yeah. 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 Take us through this. All right. Say everything works out the way you'd like it. You know, you become the starting quarterback, everything. What's the encore performance to six touchdowns in a bowl game? What, what, what would that look like your second game? I mean, how, how do you go out there and, and put it, put that game together, put that game behind you and try to move forward? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm going to go out there and and think about a, a game or a performance that I've had previously. You know, I think the, the, way, the, the, the way I approach playing quarterback is continue to make the next right decision. Mm. And regardless, like if I threw a pick the last play, which I've obviously done, <laughs> um, if I threw a pick the last play, if I threw a touchdown the last play, like continue to make the next right decision. So I don't think it's like I have to go out there and press and be like, oh, like what if I don't throw six touchdowns? Yeah. It's no, I have to do what I do the my my lead lead the team to my best ability and continue to make the right the next right decision. I think that's all I have to do because at the end of the day, like I can't go out there and be like, oh, if I don't throw six touchdowns, it's a failure. Yeah. Because as long as we're able to win games, like it's always a success, success in my mind. So whatever I can do to help the team win at the end of the day is what I'm going to continue to do. Obviously, USC fans can't watch practice, so I, it was kind of the coming out party for the Makai Lemons, the Jacoby Lanes. But if you're watching practice, you knew that they were talented from the yeah. start. For you, having that chemistry for, with them, what was that like having that kind of come out party for them and their talent? It was great. I mean, like obviously they were young, or they still are young, but they were younger than um, – 
And because obviously Caleb got all the starting reps, I got a lot of the second team reps with those guys. So we've been able to build a rapport throughout the season. Um, some of those guys obviously come in spring, so I've been working with them for a good amount of time. But um, it's always great to see really talented kids have a have a special moment and have a coming out party. But I think we also can't sit here and be like, oh, like that was such a great experience. Like football is a very very much what have you done for me lately and we don't want to get caught up in that and trying to impress people but we also like we have to continue moving forward put that behind us and say this is something positive but we have to continue to build on it are you cool with the nickname killer moss sue cravens is pretty into it <laughs> whatever you guys want <laughs> all right well yeah we're looking forward to you spinning it next april 20th at the spring game miller moss uh, competing for that starting job at usc coming off a, a fantastic holiday bowl performance thanks so much for taking the time miller you have your juju watkins jersey yet miller do you need us to get you one i do not but if you want to get me one i'm i'm all for it <laughs> i'm probably not allowed to but i'm sure that we can get you one uh the uh, story of campus right now usc women's basketball we're going to talk to uh, coach beth burns next about that trojans live is sponsored by pachanga resort casino proud part partner of USC football and Monster Energy, the official energy drink of USC, Unleash the Beast. Coach B is next on Trojans Live. USC Trojan fans, Smart Stop Self Storage is ready for game day. Smart Stop Self Storage is committing to making the self storage experience easy and hassle free for all Trojan fans. Whether you're storing your Trojans tailgate gear, need temporary storage while moving to a new home, or need a storage solution for your business, we're here for you with convenient locations throughout Southern California. Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Visit smartstop.com to reserve your space today. Fight on. Fight on. Introducing Stone Fight On Pale Ale with a balanced blend of hops and a deep golden color as vibrant as the Southern California sunshine. Stone Fight On Pale Ale is brewed to be the perfect companion for the beach, the tailgate, or cheering on the Trojans. Stone Fight On Pale Ale is best enjoyed by holding a can in one hand and raising a V for victory with the other. Find Stone Fight On Pale Ale near you at find.stonebrewing.com. That's find.stonebrewing.com. Stone Brewing is a proud partner of USC Athletics. The mountains you climb may be stairs. The records you set may be personal. The fans you inspire may be family. But you don't need to be an athlete to get the same nutrition, energy, and hydration products Trojan athletes get. For that, you just need Honey Stinger. Nutrition specifically formulated to help you prepare, perform, and recover at your best. Honey Stinger, official nutrition partner of USC Athletics. We are Life Law, where we make injury law simple. We have two simple goals for all of our clients, full medical recovery and ultimately full monetary compensation. We understand that it can be overwhelming to face the uncertainty in the wake of an accident. We will be there with you at each step in the legal and health care process. You will pay nothing unless we win your case. Dial 1-800-LYFE-LAW or check us out at lyfe.com. Life Law, official sponsors of USC Athletics. Now, back to more Trojans Live. Oh, sorry, that's Trojans Live. Looks the same. Once again, here are Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Keely Orr. The Women's Spotlight is brought to you by Sprouts Farmers Market. Open seven days a week. Visit your neighborhood Sprouts for good for you groceries and great prices on the freshest produce. The spotlight is shining bright on USC women's basketball, having its best season in 30 years, honestly, almost 40 years now with uh, with really what they're accomplishing coming off a Pac-12 tournament championship, picking up a number one seed. Uh, the tournament starts on Saturday. We get to host it. 1.30 tip-off on Saturday at Galen. Get to usctrojans.com slash NCAAWBB. Tickets are just 30 bucks, and you get the whole session. Uh, what an awesome experience and everything going on around this program. We are welcomed by Associate Head Coach Beth Burns, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Keely York. Or, uh, Coach, boy, this really came together um, this season. What, what's special about this group that you were able to take uh, a lot of players in their first year, whether it's uh, star freshmen or, or star transfers, and, and come together and just have this incredible run? Before I answer that question, I just have to say, as we're closing the football segment, if we can shoot at a percentage that Miller Moss throws touchdown passes, <laughs> I think we good for the next 21 yeah, I like days. That. Yeah. I'm, I'm for ready sure. for I like it. That. I'm ready for it. You know, I, I think it starts and ends with Lindsey Gottlieb. Because in this era of the portal, which it is, yep. it's a, a selfless leader 
who communicates well individually and collectively and is very honest from day one. And then, you know, you just hope it works. <laughs> but I think that the combination of we have six seniors, a lot has spoken about our Ivies, which are fabulous. We have six seniors who all are huge contributors and their life experience. They might not be USC experienced. And Lindsay had to give them permission to be themselves. Because when you first come somewhere, it doesn't matter if you're 23 or 18, you're new. So you want to defer to those in front of you. Well, guess what, guys? There ain't nobody in front of you. So let's go. Let's get this thing going. And I think that and obviously the opportunity to sign Juju because in our world, if it's good enough for Juju, it's good enough for me. And, and don't think that that didn't transition to this year being having a, our opportunity to sign the number one recruiting class in the country because people like what Juju does. Juju is a, another, a selfless leader and star. And Lindsay has put all the ingredients together and you're, you're reaping the rewards of it right now. Coach, kind of take us through this team a little bit. Obviously, the, the big name on the team is Juju. Everyone knows it around campus, around, around the country probably at this point by now with the number one seed and everything. But obviously, a, a team game, you, you're not winning it when it wasn't just person. Sure. T take us through this team and the important pieces and, and how you guys all formulated at the right time. Well, and I would, I would say to that, I've been in this game 40 years. I have never seen a defense like Stanford played against us mm -hmm. on Sunday. Wow. Like, I, I've seen box and one, triangle and two, chase. That was five. Yeah. You know, I told her, I used the LeBron line. Hey, Jew, not one, not two, not three, yeah, not yeah, four. Yeah. There were five people in a high-low zone. And I think what that has enabled us to do is show, like, Juju wants to win at yeah. the end of the day. And obviously, if you had the opportunity to witness our game at Stanford, it, it was – something I'll never forget. I mean, sometimes that just happens. Yeah. And she was that good. But Kayla Padilla scored almost 2,000 points at Penn. Mackenzie Forbes was like the MVP at Harvard. So all of these, all of these athletes, what she can do, I know what she can do. Now you're starting to see what other people can do. And, and don't, the, the emergence of Caitlin Davis, who had some injury, she had knee injury, she had a concussion. She, we thought she was going to be a big piece for us. And if you watch the Pac-12 tournament, you can see the, the chemistry that she's getting inside with Ray and Caitlin Davis. Just our balance is tough. It's, it's harder to stop a balance team yeah. than a one-man band. And Juju, by far, will be the first to tell you, uh, as talented as she is, we're not a one-man band. You're the defensive mind of the team. And you mentioned the back to tournament. I thought you guys reached a whole new level on defense. You mentioned KD, uh, but also Ray Marshall with the season high 18 uh, rebounds. Like, how did you guys just take it to a, a, a another level in a, such a tight, competitive tournament? Well, I, th I think that, again, it's the growth. And, and may I add, they're pretty bright. These new kids, they're, they're pretty bright. And they've gotten better. That's the goal, right? To get better and better and better. And they're changing the way they used to do things and buying into a team concept. When you have an eraser in the back, and we have one of the best elite shot blockers in the country and one of the best elite post defenders in both Rhea and Clarice, then it enables us to do some different things. Our X factor is Caitlin Davis, who's so good in a broken floor that she kind of cleans up everybody else's messes. But it was like Kayla Padilla, again, who was known as a scorer, held London from UCLA 0 for 8. Mm. Hannah Jump from Stanford 1 for 9. So everybody's kind of buying in that if we rebound, we're going to win games. If we guard and rebound, because some nights you can't make shots. Yeah. As Keeley said, we're, we're, we're talking to associate head coach Beth Burns, and as Keeley said, you are sort of the de facto defensive coordinator for this team. W what are your principles defensively that are across any team that, that you've ever coached, and then how do you adjust to the personnel like, like what you've had this season? Well, and I think that's the biggest key. Our team last year was 100% different yep. than this year's team, and it's not what I like to do. It's what can we do best to put the pieces together and I think that's what we've been able to do at one point early in January we we're over 200th in the nation in rebounding and in case you're wondering that is not a stat <laughs> that we really aspire to mm, okay in within three weeks we were 110 and then in another week now we're under 50 and if you look at our last 10 games since we lost to Washington, we've out-rebounded all but one opponent. So having our team understand 
There's different ways. We don't pressure to turn you. Last year's team pressured to turn you over. That's not the kind of team we have. We do different things. We have really good length. We have big wings. We're interchangeable. So we try to trick them and, and do some different things to force some tougher shots. Coach, talk about this energy I, I'm getting from you right now. I, always, I want to rebound right now. Well, I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. If you, got, you can get us under, if you can get us in the top 20, you're in. <laughs> you got this great juice about you, Coach. Where, where does that come from? Did, did you grow up like that? You, we've heard about legendary morning runs you go on. I've seen you on social mu mu uh, media just dominant and just full of energy. Where, where does this come from? You know, it, I guess it's my blessing or, or my curse. I, I, I love to teach. I love to coach. I love the age group of 18 to 22, and I am grateful to be able to do it every day. So I am what I am, and that's what you're going to get. <laughs> love it. All right, Coach Burns will be out there on Saturday leading this USC team alongside the head coach, Lindsey Gottlieb, a number one seed for the women of Troy. USC Ooh. will take on Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, second game of the day, so one thirty approximate tip. Game's on ESPN, but is, if you can get here, get we want you we inside you. the Go Galen to Center. What you. an opportunity to, uh, to be a part of this journey for women's basketball. Not everyone gets to go to an NCAA tournament game. You can do it, and it's a four as well so get there for sure good luck coach uh, we you. are all behind you fight on trojans and fly on with ont ontario international airport is a proud sponsor of our usc trojans visit socalsoeasy.com to book your journey through ont today and trojans live is sponsored by pachanga resort casino a proud partner of usc athletics Caden aoki the ace pitcher for usc baseball is next on trojans live Blue, 42. Give me the energy to catch the ball, to blow by the defense, to crush whatever comes at me, to win the division, the conference, a ring. Monster Hydro helps Grunk perform at his best every day with the energy and electrolytes your body needs to win on or off the field. Monster Hydro, advanced hydration for everyday performance, hard charging hydration. After the end of a good fight, you deserve an ice cold reward. Medela is the mark of a fighter. You've earned this rich golden lager with a crisp, refreshing taste. Because you know the bigger the fight, the better the reward. You put in the hours, the energy, the tough labor. You are a fighter, and Medela is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. Drink responsibly. Beer imported by Crown Import, Chicago, Illinois. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable when you can get live sports and TV for less with Fubo TV? Watch your teams, shows, news, and more on over 100 channels. Plus, on-demand entertainment, including full TV series, all on your TV, phone, and tablet. No cable or satellite dish required. There's no contract, no hidden fees, and you can cancel anytime. Try Fubo TV for free at FuboTV.com. That's F-U-B-O-T-V.com. It's time to recharge, reconnect, and rediscover your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, there's all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino today. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Spring is a time for rejuvenation. And Trojans Live. Once again, here are Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Keely Yor. And you've got good beer and good vibes. It's all Buena. Stone Buena Vesa Salt and Lime Lager is Baja inspired, imported from San Diego, located near you at find.stonebrewing.com. We've got good vibes here on a Monday mm. night. It's still sunny out, uh, beautiful, sunny Southern California. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Keely Yor. Kate Nioki joins us now. 
Uh, USC baseball's uh, Friday night starter, all Pac-12 last season. Uh, you guys are coming off a big weekend. You took two out of three up at the what the Sunken Diamond they call it at Stanford. Uh, that that had to feel good uh, the way you guys started the year. You know w what's that doing for the for the locker room today to to you know have a series like that to build on. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people probably think that the locker room is a little down because of our record and all that, but the good part about our team is that uh, is that we're just uh, keeping the vibes high and we're not trying to think about our record, kind of just think that we're 0-0 and, and just trying to win that day. Um, but I'd be lying if I were to say that uh, the locker room didn't get a little kickstart from that for sure. I mean, it's a huge series win to go to the farm. I believe they said it was the first series wins there since uh, 2014. So it wow. definitely felt good. I mean, we're in the airport. We're saying let's win to play Mafia in the airport. And so we can actually like not be silent in the airport because we lost the series. So <laughs> it, it, it was good to have that win. Yeah, take us through the season a little bit. You know, uh, obviously not the start you wanted to get off to, but always interesting to see a team that can kind of, you know, change their season. Some se sometimes you get in one of those ruts and you, you can't find your way out. How did you guys think you kind of can get, can get this uh, thing head in the right direction? I mean, as Coach Stank says, I mean, just keep showing up. Uh, we need to just show up every single day, try and get better, and just get to the point that we believe that we should be, yeah. and just keep believing. Uh, and that's what the team's doing right now. And uh, like we said, to get that win at Stanford, I mean, that should hopefully uh, get us going in the right direction. It's a unique season for you guys. You're not playing at Dado due to construction. What's it been like adjusting to the, the new look USC baseball right now? Uh, I mean, adjustment is going to happen with change, but at the same time, we try not to focus on that. I mean, the team loves each other, and so just going out anywhere playing baseball is always going to be a good time. So even traveling with the team, you just get to know each other more, so it's not that bad. You had your best start of the season on Friday. Uh, what, what do you feel like clicked for you? Uh, I mean, after the, f the start of the season, I mean, myself wasn't uh, – pulling the weight that I should have as well as the team, you know, ha didn't do that great as well. Um, so to have that start, it was just believing in myself again, trying to get back on track uh, with myself and the team. Uh, but more than anything, it's just mental just to get there, just believe in myself 100 percent and just go out and believe, do what I uh, believe I should do. All right, take us through your stuff, man. I want to hear about what you got here. What's uh, how do, what's your out pitch? What what do you like to start with? Tell us, take us through your your game and your approach on the mound. Self scout right now. <laughs> yeah, self scout. I mean, I know a lot of people like to tell me I throw that I don't throw that hard, which is you know probably true. <laughs> um, but I like to just attack uh, with everything I have: fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. Uh, my curveball right now has been uh, clicking for me more than last year. I've been getting more strikeouts with that, but. Uh, my bread and butter is definitely my changeup. Mm. Uh, oh, couldn't hit the changeup, Jordan. That was yeah. That was the, the best end of my the game. That was my, the end of my career. The changeup. Best pitch <laughs> in the game. Yeah, I mean, if you can execute a good one, it's it's going to be hard to hit. So I like to throw that a lot. But really, just what other what whatever Coach uh, Etherton calls, I mean, I'm going to throw and I'm going to believe in it. So that's just what's been working. How would you describe Coach Stank? What's his philosophy like? Coach Stank, I mean, he's hard nosed, but at the same time, he he loves you, you know. So um, he's gonna tell you how it is, but at the same time, you know, he's coming from a really good, really good part in his heart. Uh, just wants you to get better, and he doesn't want to discourage you. But uh, if you're not doing what he wants you to do, he's definitely gonna let you know, and hopefully, you can get better the next time. You're listening to Kate Naoki of USC Baseball on Trojans Live. Last season, as I mentioned, you led the Pac-12 in ERA. You had a streak of 23 and a third scoreless mm. innings. Uh, wow. what, what was that groove like? Uh, you know, how, how do you explain that feeling when you were taking the ball time after time and not giving up any runs? Yeah, it's actually pretty funny. I mean, I came back from a minor injury, and I believe I started the streak uh, – from the first inning I pitched back from that injury. And honestly, I was just so happy to just throw a baseball again and just like be able to get out there and pitch. And I was just running on fumes. And uh, I, like I said, I just continued to believe in myself. And that ended up happening, which was super cool. But I try not to think about it too much. Sean, who has the major league record for a scoreless inning streak? Is it a Dodger? If it's it not a Dodger, a Dodger, okay. It's a Dodger. It's Kershaw. a Dodger. Is it Kershaw? No. Okay, next. Uh... <laughs> Oral Hershiser. Oral Hershiser. Oh. Oral Hershiser, Caden, 59 straight scoreless oh. innings at the big league level. Can you imagine that? Uh, I mean, that's almost a full college season, so <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Wild. Not a guy that threw that hard either. I mean, you know, he's kind of an all-arsenal crafty pitcher as well. Yeah, the game's not seeing it too much uh, nowadays, so maybe it's a little different. That's doing me well.
I used to pitch back in the day. I didn't really have good stuff. But I, I know I had I had some some of the plays I didn't like as a pitcher were you know covering first and yeah. getting a bun or backing up a, a base. You know what? Are, what are your least favorite play as a pitcher? What do you hate doing? Obviously, striking people out is fun, but the the other stuff is not that much fun. Yeah, I mean, you just described PFP's pitcher fielding play. Uh, you know, but, <laughs> I was uh, a zoo out there. <laughs> but actually, I mean, I was a former infielder, and you know, oh, okay. I still sometimes like to think I'm a shortstop at heart. Um, so you going no glove? Those plays, You're yeah. I actually look, really look forward to when someone bunts or makes a play. I mean, but <laughs> I mean, undisputedly, running to first to try and cover a play is probably just not that fun. So, so definitely that. All right, it's Caden Aoki. Uh, USC's cross town this weekend at UCLA. That is a series we wouldn't mind seeing you win for sure. Keep the momentum going uh, as uh, USC baseball builds it brick by brick. Want the inside scoop on this game and all things Trojans? Be sure to sign up for the Three Torches presented by Smart and Final. It's a free newsletter that'll hit your email inbox three times a week with game info, player insights, and more. Go to usctrojans.com slash three torches and sign up. And don't wait until, until game time for, to uh, plan for retirement. Open your free iTrust Capital account today and get your crypto IRA. I trust Capital is the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Our Trojan Roundtable is next. We're going to do some football. We're going to do a little women's basketball in a bit. Stay with us on Trojans Live. Good news. There's a Jersey Mice coming to your area. You probably got a ton of questions, so I'll try to answer some. Yes, the meat and cheese for every cold sub is freshly sliced right in front of you. Yes, we grill every hot sub right in front of you. No, we do not accept pirate doubloons for payment. Yes, we have catering. 12 subs in a box. No, our restaurants are not haunted. I hope. Okay, congrats on the New Jersey Mikes. A sub above. Blue, 42. Give me the energy to catch the ball, to blow by the defense, to crush whatever comes at me, to win the division, the conference. A ring? Monster Hydro helps Grunk perform at his best every day with the energy and electrolytes your body needs to win on or off the field. Monster Hydro, advanced hydration for everyday performance. Hard charging hydration. Tommy Trojan is at the 10, the 5, touchdown, USC. Make big plays on the field and in life. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto 24-7 with the tax benefits of a retirement account. That's right, invest in crypto with the tax advantages of an IRA. iTrust Capital is easy to use and has no sign-up fees. Don't be a Monday morning quarterback. Make big plays now. Visit iTrustCapital.com to start investing today. iTrust Capital, the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Taxes and conditions may apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment. Introducing Stone Fight on Pale Ale, with a balanced blend of hops and a deep golden color as vibrant as the Southern California sunshine. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is brewed to be the perfect companion for the beach, the tailgate, or cheering on the Trojans. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is best enjoyed by holding a can in one hand and raising a V for victory with the other. Find Stone Fight on Pale Ale near you at find.stonebrewing.com. That's find.stonebrewing.com. Stone Brewing is a proud partner of USC Athletics. USC Trojan fans, Smart Stop Self Storage is ready for game day. Smart Stop Self Storage is committing to making the self storage experience easy and hassle free for all Trojan fans. Whether you're storing your Trojans tailgate gear, need temporary storage while moving to a new home, or need a storage solution for your business, we're here for you with convenient locations throughout Southern California. Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Visit smartstop.com to reserve your space today. Fight on. Fight on. Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Football in the spring? Well, as long as it's not the UFL. It, 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 it's, it's Trojans Live with Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Keely Orr. Yeah, 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 real quick. I've been going Welcome the back top. to Trojans Live with Sean Cody and Keely Orr. I am Jordan Moore. A little 
mini football round table here's kind of a big spring guys for usc football now you don't necessarily get a lot of answers in the spring but i do think it's a big spring for questions so what what sort of uh your biggest question going into into the spring well obviously the quarterback position and and losing a heisman a former heisman candidate or heisman winner in uh in caleb williams and then trying to replace him and figuring out who that puzzles we got a glimpse during the bowl game and, and pretty good glimpse and pretty good glimpse and seeing uh miller run lincoln riley's offense and it was a good start for him but i'm um, like like lincoln said there'll be competition in spring and uh jobs to be won and had so it's that's that's always what it's about it's about competing and miller knows that so it should be fun to, to watch those guys duke it out it's interesting that that uh, coach confirmed what many speculated was miller's performance changed the way they looked at what they wanted from the rest of that room they changed the profile of what they were looking for instead of a direct replacement they're bringing in some competition for miller but he he clearly staked his claim in, in that holiday bowl yeah, it's interesting too what he mentioned about Jaden Maiava. He said he wanted someone younger but has done it before. And if you look at his tape, he has room to grow. He was a three-star coming out of high school, but he showed more on tape his first year in, in, in college. And so I'm really curious what that looks like under development of Lincoln Riley, obviously the quarterback guru. You can kind of see the the seeds are there with Jaden's tape, but where does that go? Yeah, talented kid makes me think it's not a foregone conclusion that this is Miller's yeah. job just from what we've seen from Jaden. He has played. He's played at a pretty high level at, at UNLV. But, uh, you know, the well, we started the, the conversation with Coach. Most of it was about the defense, Keeley, and, and that seems to be uh – you know the biggest the biggest question going into next season is can can he get it turned around in one year? Denton Lynn has proven he could do that. He did it last year at UCLA. Um, if he could do what he did at UCLA, and then you pair it with the Lincoln Riley offense, you got something cooking here. A hundred percent, and and that's the biggest question. You mentioned it in your question. How fast can you do that? Now, obviously, Coach Lynn did it very fast at UCLA, but they also had a lot to lot to and like some talent up front. So, what does that look like? Obviously, Sean got the answer about the the beef up front, or they added a Sean Cody. But what does that look like? You mentioned earlier, what questions do we have? I think the biggest question is, what question do I not have? There's so much to look at this spring yeah. that I, I just, starting with the defense, there's just yeah, so many questions. Yeah, a lot of questions. new players on yeah. the defensive side. I feel like the offense is, is interesting because you're really looking at development. You know, I start looking at that receiving yeah. core. Yeah. That is really, hey, we brought in a talented freshman class last year. They kind of played but 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 understudied mm -hmm. and that's like a development group whereas defensively it's just learning a lot of, a lot new of names. names yeah, yeah. Like i was looking at it before today and i was like man there's a lot of new faces in there but that's what you want i mean obviously last year the defense did not play up to par and and, and that's why you see all those all the pieces coming in the new the new the new staff so it's a, they have a they have a response this is lincoln riley's response to what happened last year and, and let's see what if they get get that thing in the right direction yeah really like some of the coaches they brought in we didn't even talk about the running backs coach uh, uh said to see kyle mcdonald go but yeah. uh, they, they brought in a very talented running backs coach previously at TCU as well. So some really interesting new names on the staff and new players on the roster. Uh, we got one more segment to come with Trojans Live. It's time to recharge, reconnect, and rediscover your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, oh, getting out of here. all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino today. Your first sip of Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic beer is a game changer. It tastes so good, you can't believe it's non-alcoholic. With a variety of craft beer styles from IPAs to sours, you can sip and celebrate alongside the USC Trojans' game-changing plays. Find a store near you or order online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code USC10 to get 10% off their first six-pack at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, fit for all times. Exclusions and conditions apply. Select you don't have knowledge. to train and compete at an elite level to enjoy the benefits of Honey like Stinger products. Honey Stinger produces fuel for athletes of all kinds using the, delicious honey and organic the, ingredients. The Not only is honey rich in antioxidants, but it's also easily digested and absorbed quickly into the system to help you prepare, perform, and recover. Turn to Honey Stinger to achieve your performance goals and feel better along the way. Honey Stinger, official nutrition partner of USC Athletics. 2930 or so. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable when you can get live sports and TV for less with Fubo TV? Watch your teams, shows, news, and more on over 100 channels. Saturday. Plus, on-demand entertainment, including full TV series. 
all on your TV, phone, and tablet. No cable or satellite on dish required. Oh, There's the no contract, no hidden show. fees, and you can cancel anytime. So. Try Fubo TV for free at FuboTV.com. That's F-U-B-O-T-V.com. Spring is in the air, and so are footballs. Heads up! Let's get you back to more Trojans Live with Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Keely Yor. One final segment of Trojans Live on a Monday night, getting into the spring season. Uh, USC football, spring football, we talked about a lot, but there's so much going on around campus support, all these USC teams. Uh, we call it championship season around here. Uh, USC women's basketball, obviously in the spotlight, going for uh, uh, th- that championship, but uh, so many teams in the spring uh, with, with top 10 kind of squads this year, so be sure to support all of them. Our final segment, the over-under, is presented by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC Athletics, Jordan Morshawn, Cody Keeley, your over under 29 and a half points for Juju Watkins on Saturday. There was a collective moment where Sean and I realized together that this is a segment we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> I'm in mid-season form. Yeah, you you are. guys are in whatever form it over, is. <laughs> over under, yes. Uh, 29? And a half. And a half. I'm going to go first game. She's oh. had 13 30-point games this season. Yeah, I'm going to go under just because it's the first game and she's just going to – she's going to go with – she's going to roll with the squad in this game and that she's going to be the – she's going to pass the ball around, I think. See, game. okay, given how she's been playing, I would take the under, but this is a different level of talent. So I want to take the over, but we also don't know her ankle health right now. So I'm just going to go with the under to keep it simple. Yeah. But she is rising on the uh, all-time NCAA freshman debut scoring – She's, I believe, fourth right now. So something to watch for this postseason. She's going over, guys. This is a big oh. one game. Oh, she's okay. going to turn it on. Book it. People you, are watching. You heard it here. The light bulbs Book are it. bright right we now. We can't huh? even circle back. Book it. Oh, we'll circle <laughs> on back. Yeah. Jordan, well, yeah. Jordan will let us know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's true. That's a good find. Circle back on my Twitter account. I'm going to be calling out all you <laughs> More haters. sports. Uh, Keely, uh, you got a chance to hang with this team in Vegas, watch them uh, win an incredible Pac-12 tournament. Uh, they beat UCLA in double overtime uh, in the semifinal in, in, in one of the most physical games I've ever seen. Uh, then they, they come back uh, a couple days later and, and knock off uh, Stanford. Um, it, what, what, what was that experience like? Incredible. It was. It, I've never been really baseline for games like this, and it is just so physical. I, I actually texted my sister who played water polo so she knew how physical like the girls game is. And I was like, if anyone says that women are not physical, like they don't know what they're oh, talking about. I think about. it's more. It's absurd. Um, but no, it was incredible. I mean, everyone talks about Juju Watkins, but this team is, you know, Coach B mentioned it, the, the six veterans on the team, like they are really leading this way and helping Juju up and, and making Juju kind of be the player that she is. Obviously she has the talent, and but she's a true freshman and you need to be led, so. It's, it's really fun to see. Well, there's more to come. They yeah. head to March Madness starting this Saturday. Trojans Live is a production of USC Sports Properties and Playfly Sports. Our executive producers, Drew DeHart, producers Rick Cutler, Ben Conroy here, the engineer. Who's back at the studio? He forgets. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, thanks to everyone involved. And check you, us producer. out on YouTube. For Sean and Keely, I'm Jordan. Fight on, everybody. You can't spell victorious without uh, you. S-C. Free receiver front set on the left side. One back is DJ Williams. The pitch to Williams. And he'll be throwing for a loss. And the Trojans have won the game. Triple overtime winner for USC. How do you do? Trojans Live was presented by Monster Energy.